Okay, guys. It is a fine summer day. Uh, it's like we kind of ended up at 86 degrees. I will not complain. Uh, 86 degrees here on uh, Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, because I pretty sure it's 106 in Austin, Texas, or probably in Spain, and uh, what is it, 102 in London, England, so I'm going to live with my 86 degrees Fahrenheit today, and uh, so I am heading back on this lovely summer day, we're heading back to Bugs in a Jar Farm with a new load of hemlock trees for my new tiny house so, uh, I got about two hours to kill and sit here and talk to myself uh, about things on my mind today so anyway uh, I got into this rousing debate which I've been in for years with a lot of people with a with a buddy here the noble savage debate was my buddy uh, David Simonson. I don't know if you guys know David Simonson or not. But anyway, uh, David and I were having as much of a gentlemanly disagreement as we could on the noble savage and whether it is a myth, uh, as I would say, or what is the opposite of a myth? I guess it's the truth. And so we were trying to figure out what the fundamental difference is between my view of the noble savage and his view. And basically, uh, it, this is an oversimplification, that my view of noble savages is the same as my view of any human being on the planet. It has... It, it has... I can't say it has nothing whatsoever to do with your culture and environment and all that, but I'm just saying it is you know, genetically programmed into Homo sapiens that we are uh, basically bloodthirsty, omnicidal, planet-killing savages. It has nothing to do what millennium you were born into, whatever, uh, if you are, it's almost like you don't even need to be a human. I mean, talk to beavers about this, uh, who have sharp teeth, and look at how they change ecosystems. Humans are going to, regardless of when and where they were born, they are going to take advantage of whatever technology they can get their little opposable thumbs onto to use it to start modifying their habitat for their benefit, uh, otherwise known as planet nibbling. And the more their technology grows, uh, it is planet eating. Uh, it is the T part of Paul Ehrlich's IPAT equation that impacts, meaning human impacts, are due to three variables. There's the uh, two we always talk about, which is overpopulation and overconsumption, but the third one that like nobody talks about other than Jared Diamond is technology. It is also a, the, the third head of the snake is technology. And uh, it doesn't matter. I, I, I mean, if your technology is a spear, you're going to do whatever you can with a spear and a club and a fire stick uh, to modify your habitat to your advantage and, and to make more and more and more copies of yourself. This is no shit Sherlock. This is, this is not just human genetics and psychology. It, 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 as I say, it's pretty much every species. And uh, the, the best books ever written on the noble savage 
whether you consider it a myth or not, the two that I highly recommend are, are Guns, Germs, and Steel. Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond and the book 1491. I, I can't remember if Ronald Wright uh, wrote the book 1491 or not. Someone help me out with that. But if you want to educate yourself and take a more <clears throat> educated position on the noble savage and whether uh, the, the idea of the noble savage is a myth or not, uh, you need to read two books and that's Guns, Germs, and Steel in 1491 and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of others and so anyway, but uh, so we kind of agreed that was our fundamental difference that he does not think that uh, Homo sapien sapien, the wise one, uh, is genetically predisposed to uh, be a cancer upon the earth, and I do. Uh, but anyway, during our discussion, uh, I did have to give David, uh, I, I did have to give him one. Uh, to, to concede one point that uh, damages my argument, and this is the idea of infanticide. Infanticide, if you uh, are not familiar with the term infanticide, it's basically killing your babies. That uh, I, I did have to uh, to uh, agree that infanticide, which was practiced by, uh, by uh, well, I don't know who all, but, but certainly the, these Amazon Indian tribes, uh, we were particularly talking about the Yanomami, and I know it was other tribes as well, up until fairly recently, and they might even still be doing it some of these quote unquote uncontacted tribes that's a whole nother rant the bullshit the myth of the uncontacted tribe i could do a whole nother rant uh on the myth of the uncontacted tribe and what unadulterated horseshit that all concept is but i'm not here to talk about the myth of the uncontacted tribe i'm here to talk about the myth of, of the noble savage, and uh, so uh, I cannot deny that uh, the fact that uh, some of these noble savages practiced or still practice infanticide as a nod to them, uh, that at least they're not as clueless in planet eating. Uh, as as honky and, and anyone who does not practice infanticide and, and essentially infanticide is kind of their I, I don't I don't know would you call it the uh, noble savage get out of jail free card and that is so the you know they they these breeders they go like any other a bunch of breeders and they breed and they have these bouncing little babies of joy and times were good in the jungle and whatnot uh, and everything's going fine it's a big party for everyone everyone has plenty to eat so uh, they figure it's fine just to invite more uh, mouths to the party so they you know so they have a bunch of fucking babies no shit Sherlock so they bring in a bunch of damn babies and then you know, when these babies are still, you know, uh, I, I'm thinking we're going to call it up to age five. It's, we're not talking about necessarily about brand new newborn babies. I think it's, you know, it's, it's infants and small children. I'm pretty sure it goes up to age three and maybe even age five. I admit I... I haven't uh, dis I, I haven't researched this subject in a few years. I'm kind of rusty on killing babies. Uh, so anyway, so when these kids, 
you know, the newest members of the tribe are who have not really, they're not, they're not old enough to produce anything for the, uh, you know, for the common good that they are essentially useless eaters at that point, but they have to be fed. And then if the tribe hits bad times uh, and there's not enough food to go around, somebody, something's got to give. Something's got to give. And now uh, old folks uh, they're probably already dead anyway. Uh, so who do you think uh, it, it is going to go? It's the it's the infants. It's the it's the you know the babies that are not contributing to the tribe. This is when, whether it be the community decision, the tribal chieftain, the uh, shaman, I don't know, looks at the obvious facts on the wall that we are exceeding our carrying capacity, that our environment, our local habitat can no longer feed us. We have two choices, is that everybody goes, uh, you know, doesn't get enough to eat so we can uh, feed these babies who are not doing anything to help us secure more food uh, or we get rid of the babies so the so the whole tribe can uh, remain you know healthy and robust uh, until the good times return uh, this was you know this was back in the day uh, when the good times had a chance of returning so uh, obviously this has nothing to do uh, with, with today because the good times are gone and they're never coming back. But you know what I'm talking about. Uh, back when there was a chance that uh, good times were returning, then when they came back, then the clueless fucking moron breeders could go right on uh, doing what clueless fucking moron breeders do, and that's breed and make more babies. Uh, so anyway, uh, I have to admit the cultural practice of infanticide more than anything else, uh, you know, has to make me question my argument that there are still a, a tiny, tiny fragment of the global population understanding uh, that, that sometimes you just got to make tough choices. And, uh, you, you, you know, you got to call a spade a spade. You got to call a, a useless eater a useless eater and go out of the jungle and bury them alive or whatever they did with these little kids. And uh, so we went from that discussion, which, of course, brushes up against here in our own modern culture, this whole... Uh, this whole discussion, or you know, this Roe versus Wade and abortions and the right to life and uh, pro-choice and everything, uh, that that there's obviously just uh, you know one intelligent answer to all this, and this is taking you know the intelligent notion of infanticide and applying it to our culture, and it quickly becomes obvious, guys that uh, that the the abortion you know the pregnancy term limit uh, you know this big you know does human life begin at conception does it begin uh, you know at three weeks seven weeks uh, you know all of this fucking debate when human life begins and trying to, you know, go in there and decide at what point, how long can uh, the term be uh, before abortions are made illegal. Uh, you know, when does it become a legal abortion and when does it become a uh, homicide? And you know, just extrapolating infanticide, there's only one answer, 
I think the uh, the the abortion term limit should be five years. Uh, five years, you know. It's uh, I, I think women should have a uh, just kind of a you know kind of a five year uh, test run with their uh, adorable little bundles of joy. And any time in that five years that the woman becomes aware of, uh, you know, what the fuck she is inflicted uh, upon herself, her own child, uh, and the planet, that she reserves the legal right, uh, you know, to go take the kid out in the woods and bury him alive up to his fifth birthday. Uh, because, you know, face it, what, what are your earliest memories? You didn't become a fucking human until you were five years old. So what we need to do is set the legal abortion term limit at five years. Uh, is the movement I want to start. We're going to call it the five-year termists. And uh, so I want to start this new movement to legalize abortion up to five years and for any reason if the woman you know she counts the kids fingers and he has six fingers on one hand you know like any other animal uh, would just would commit a little infanticide so they can decide you know right there in the maternity room uh, you know check the kid out and if there's anything defective, uh, you know, about the little fucker, uh, she should just, uh, you know, just tell the doctor, uh, no thank you. And, uh, head, you know, get her tubes tied and head out of the hospital and say, man, that was a close call. But, but not just the maternity, I mean, at any point, uh, the, you know, after the woman uh, has experienced being a mother, uh, she can decide, you know, after looking at the fucking grocery bills and the doctor bills and, and you know, the fucking gas bills running this little privileged fuck uh, all over the goddamn planet, uh, you know, adding up the goddamn haircuts and the piano lessons and the fucking diaper bill and uh, good God, it goes on and fucking on, uh, you know, adding up the goddamn, just adding up the fucking bills, listening to that fucking uh, screaming and crying and that whiny little, that fucking whiny little voice that those little uh, that those little fuckers have that at any point that the woman just looks at this little fucker and says you know you little fuck uh, I thought I wanted you but Jesus Christ you're not gonna grow up to save the fucking planet ain't gonna happen uh, and I'm doing you a favor by putting you out of your fucking misery I'm doing you a favor, myself a favor, and the planet a favor. And so up until this kid's fifth birthday, uh, the woman should be able to make this call. Now, you do notice I keep saying this is a woman's right uh, because it might not be fair to the child if it was a paternal. If, it, uh, if uh, Make sure you understand this is a maternal not a paternal uh, right because it, 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 you know on one hand obviously uh, I, I would even I uh, the old antinatalist himself uh, is not going to suggest because any fucking man uh, stuck with one of these little fuckers you know the first goddamn time they have to change a shitty diaper uh, they would be committing a little bit of infanticide, you know? Uh, anytime, you know, some dude uh, wants a little pussy 
uh, out of his wife, and, and she's fucking dealing with this little brat and, and uh, interrupting his goddamn sex life. I mean, who would put up with this shit? There's no fucking man alive uh, with any fucking balls who would take this fucking shit uh, off one of these uh, fucking little... Uh, you know, that he's, I don't know what Sheldon Solomon would call them. Would they be like uh, meat baglets? Uh, so anyway, even I am, am going to give the, the fucking little brat, a, you know, a sporting chance and uh, say that this is, a, you know, the, a, a maternal right. And uh, so then we could uh, all become noble savages. Uh, you know, any woman uh, taking out her, her fucking little spawn uh, to, you know, to save, uh, to do a favor to fucking everybody. Uh, she should be rewarded. And uh, sure as hell not criminalized. I am all for women's rights. I don't get it how, how uh, uh, all of these uh, clueless bitches calling Hambone Little Tail <coughs> a misogynist. Uh, <coughs> I am in full support uh, of women being able to carry the uh, legal term of their abortion to five years. You, you can't be more anti-misogynist, more anti-sexist uh, than that. So anyway, uh, I do want to thank my buddy David Simonson for uh, helping me come to the obvious conclusion how uh, we can get back to being noble savages and, and, and saving the planet. Uh, infanticide. Uh, you know, it's time to reconsider infanticide. So anyway, that's my story and I am sticking to it uh, on this beautiful day. Oh, we have one of the, uh, one of the bright green we have one of the bright green fucking uh, environmental dump trucks. We are coming in. Uh, <laughs> we're we're coming in to the uh, you, to the uh, windmill to the windmill graveyard where the uh, environmental uh, eighteen wheelers uh, dragging all of the the dead wind turbines. Uh, to save the planet it is we're coming in all right looks like we have a new delivery a new 18 wheeler full of dead uh dead windmills let's take one last passing look at the uh at the windmill graveyard uh, which is getting ready to have another delivery. Where is it? it look at this. I could look at this this camper. But I could do a whole fucking. Uh, I don't know which is more obscene that uh, that camper lot or the uh, windmill graveyard. Maybe I'm not. Okay, I guess that's not quite. I can swear this is where the windmill graveyard was but I, I think we've all seen that anyway so uh, oh here it comes uh, Bath New York I've always loved the name of this town Bath New York we have the little uh, planet nibbling machines out here all right here comes the windmill graveyard. I see the 18-wheeler getting off. There it is. All of the bright green environmental dump trucks bringing more uh, dead windmills 
dead windmills are certainly uh, an advertisement for uh, infanticide. Anyway, I'm back to this beautiful day. I got to get back to the tunes. Bye, guys.